Today we're making Thanksgiving decorations. Keep watching. I'm Brandy, and this is Making It My Own DIYs. The first project will be a harvest centerpiece. Welcome back, guys and gals. So I've got some wheat picks here, some sunflowers, some extras, and some of these beautiful picks from Walmart. My sister gave me these, and I got a bunch of different bundles. Uh, if you can see down there, I have a wooden box, and I have placed down some of those um, little floaties, those pool noodles. Now I'm going to cut off my little leaves from my stems, and then I'm going to start placing them down. When you cut these off, be sure you leave them long if you're going to be putting them in a box because you want to make sure they're tall enough to stand up above the edge of the box. I am just going to be poking these down here and there. If you have your greenery with kind of bendy, floppy stems, just put your hand toward the bottom and help guide it into that pool noodle, and it'll stay down in there. Sometimes you get ready to push it and it crumples up, so just, you know, be patient. It will work. This is a very affordable way to have floral foam. And by the way, this is not my idea. Other people do this as well. But I thought it was a good idea, so I wanted to give it a shot. And I'm happy with it. So I'll go from corner to corner, edge to edge, north, south, south, east, west. Some are standing, some are bent out toward the sides. And I want my leaves to be sort of facing upward. So you can see here what I've done. And I've left all that in there so you can see exactly what I'm doing. I don't want any gaps in there. You could always cover those noodles with, um, you know, well, you could get, if you're using foliage that happens to be orange, you could always get an orange pool noodle because Dollar Tree sells them pretty much all year now in all kinds of different colors. But you could also put Spanish moss or something on there to cover it up. Or if you do like me and you put a whole lot in that box, make it look nice and lush, then you're really not going to see into it anyway. Now we're going to move on and I am going to be putting down my beautiful white sunflowers. Use any colors you like. This is more of a neut neutral type of arrangement here. Right now, uh, where I live in southern Alabama, we are getting leaves on the ground finally. You can sit on the porch. The weather is nice. Um, it's a little dry. We haven't had any rain, but after all the rain we got this summer, I'm, I'm okay with it. With some crispy grass and not lots of uh, crunchy leaves under my feet. After I've got my floor, four flowers in there. Oh, I'm getting tongue twisted today. Put your other greenery in there and I chose this greenery because it does have like a fallish kind of look kind of um, olive greens in it it's not bright green so it looks like maybe some things that are turning for the fall I think it's a pretty look what do you think about that now you can still see down there to the foam but let's not worry about that because look at this these picks I got these at the thrift store but you can get um, these wheat picks at Dollar Tree and you're just gonna poke those down in there and spread them out a little bit. And then we're really gonna take up some room and really make this look, I don't know, just that wheat just says Thanksgiving to me. It just says harvest and Thanksgiving. So if you don't celebrate Thanksgiving, maybe you do something like a Friendsgiving or you celebrate a harvest meal with your family, whatever you wanna call it in any way, you could use this. If you don't celebrate any of that, this could just simply be some decoration for you to use for fall and autumn. And the box that I got, the beautiful, rich wooden box I got from the thrift store. You can use anything you have for this. See, that wasn't hard at all, was it? Nope. Not too bad. The next project is going to be a harvest wreath. And this wreath is going to somewhat match what we had going on in the box. So I'm gonna take one of these grapevine wreaths. It is about an 18 by, I think, 15, yes. It's an oval, but you choose whatever shape you like. I'm gonna use some of those same picks, cut them all off. I've got some of these little wheat grasses and 
think it's called amaranthus. I've got some of the beautiful leftover picks of eucalyptus. And I'm just going to start adding these in. I love to use a grapevine wreath for autumn and for winter because it just looks more rustic. And that's how I feel. Um, you know, I feel, I feel like the outdoors, the beautiful colors, they just really bring a nice textural element into your house and it's just warm and cozy when the weather starts getting cooler and I love to use them and they're really easy to use this poor wreath I've had forever you can see I've got jute tied around it to help keep its shape and um, the stems just go right down in there now this is something that you want to put outside you're gonna to need to use some glue on this you're gonna to need to use like a Gorilla Glue on the end of your picks to keep them all down. But since I recycle mine and use them, you know, over and over again, I wanna be sure that I don't glue anything down. And the picks will stay in here pretty good on their own without having to use any glue at all. Y'all, sometimes when I'm doing wreaths, I take things apart and I put them back together. So I'll move stuff around, I'll look at it and decide that, you know, maybe I don't like it and I'll put it someplace else. But once you know for sure where you want it, then you can put your glue down if you want it to be permanent. Now, these little picks here, beautiful little picks that I thrifted, are actually three wound together. So always check, when you do this, you can save your money by breaking those pieces apart and spreading them out. What about that? Not a bad idea, right? Just always check and see. If they've got that little uh, paper around it, sometimes you can just peel that paper off and you'll see individual picks in there. Mm-hmm, save your money where you can, ladies and gents. All right, so I'm gonna start by just placing some here and there. I'm doing the outside of the wreath and then I'm going to the inside. Look at that little bug. You see that little spider? It's a good thing I'm not scared of those. He came out of my florals. Just gonna continue placing these down. And you can use anything you have. Um, lots of times I get the comments that, you know, people can't fly, find the kind of florals that I have or their thrift stores don't have good florals and stuff like that. But you can go to Dollar General. You can go to Dollar Tree. Uh, Walmart has really beautiful picks too, and you can get some of their picks for 98 cents, which makes them even more affordable. You can also find floral picks at garage sales, at estate sales. You know, watch when churches are having sales. You can get things like, you know, from there also. So, just a couple of things to keep in mind. Not to mention, Black Friday will be coming up and then Cyber Monday, and you can buy some things and put them back for next year if you've got the space for it. So now, once I've got all those pieces in, I'm just gonna start adding this, I think it's amaranthus, um, or seed pods, whatever you wanna use, and add that in here. It's just gonna give it a different textural element to keep it interesting. And then just here and there, and then I'm just gonna put one randomly over here to the left on the top. Not even gonna have one on the right. Not even gonna do it. Now I'm gonna take a placemat from Dollar Tree, and I'm gonna cut that beautiful centerpiece out of there. I'm gonna use it in my wreath. It's gorgeous. I had three of these. I thought I had four, but I only had three, so I can't use them on my table. Once it's cut out, this is how it looks. Gorgeous. All right, so I'm gonna put it aside and we're gonna work on a bow. I am going to make two bows for you. We're gonna do two different ones, two different ways, so you can decide what you like best. On the first bow, I'm using two pieces of each of these sort of burlapy ribbons, and they are wired, and we're gonna make a funky bow, okay? But this time we make the funky bow, we're gonna, when we fold it over, make the little loop on the top, we're gonna to leave one strand longer than the other one for each one of those. You see, I'm gonna show you as we go along here, I'm not gonna do this fast, we're gonna do it slow. I'm gonna pinch the next one up, and that loop is about four inches across. So you see what we've got so far. I'm gonna do the same thing with this one. And this one actually happens to have come from Dollar Tree, that beautiful rust color. This one is from burlapfabric.com. And then the green and the gold that I have came from Hobby Lobby and I got those from 50% off. So I was very excited to get those. There's a lot of ribbon on there and you can also use this gold and this green any time of year. You know, you can use this when you're doing your summer arrangements, when you're doing lemons and bees and things like that. Gorgeous. Get it now while you can get it cheaper. I don't want you to have any excuse to not craft. 
because it's so good for the soul. It's so good for you. Okay, so look at that big bundle. You see, all is still in my hand. I'm gonna use a zip tie. I'm gonna wrap it around and then I'm not gonna tighten it all the way down yet. I'm actually going to put a piece of floral wire in there and then I'm going to tighten it up. I'm bad about not putting my wire pipe cleaners in there. All right, so this is how it's gonna look. We're gonna go to the long and the short tails and we're gonna dovetail each one of those. Y'all, this microphone is absolutely awesome, but I know you can hear my chair squeak. I know you can hear me swallow. You can hear me sniffle. I'm sorry about that. You can hear my dog bark outside. You can hear all that. Okay, so I just twisted that floral wire so it wouldn't slip out while I'm fluffing the bow. Just twisted it around the zip tie. And now I'm gonna start pulling those loops apart from each other, pulling them apart, giving them some room to breathe here. I'm gonna pull those little short tails up and out also. Spreading everything out, giving it a little bit of room. Okay, we all know how to fluff a bow, but it is very, very important. Very important. Okay, now if, when you lay it down, it looks sort of like an octopus, right? It's got all these little pieces sticking out from it, and then it's got the loops right in the middle. I'm gonna lay everything down, make sure my wire is twisted in the right direction, try to make sure that I have the colors separated so no two things are together. Then I can just take that floral wire and wrap it around that wreath. Now that's what the funky bow is going to look like on here. I put that on here, I love the colors, but I don't think, in my opinion, this is the right bow for the wreath. So you're gonna see me take it off and fix it in a moment. I'll change it up. So I'm taking a popsicle stick. All I had was the wide ones and I'm just trying to break it into pieces so that I can use this as supports to put the little sign down that we made from the placemat. This is easy to do because you just stick it into the wreath and then you stick the other one there. It makes kind of like little arms go into the center. You're gonna add glue to it to hold it into the wreath. And then also on the arm little parts that are sticking out so that your sign will sit up on it. And because this is like a hard plastic type stuff, it's not gonna collapse. It stands up in there on its own. Just gonna nestle it down in there and press it to the, to the uh, thing until it is dry and then fluff my greenery around it. So this is how it's gonna look. It's your first option with that particular bow on it. And I love the idea of it. I just wasn't feeling it for this wreath. I just really was not. Let me show you another little trick. If you use your grapevine wreaths over and over again and then you got hot glue on there that won't come off, get a tool like a heat gun or a blow dryer Start warming that up and then take one of those plastic stems off of your flowers and twist it in the glue. That glue is gonna stick to the plastic and you can pull it right off of there and then you don't have the mess of the glue on there anymore, see? Look at it coming off, look at that. Perfectly erased, love it. So I decided I wanted this copper ribbon on my wreath. Now I made my own um, wreath, my own bow making tool here. That's what you're seeing. I do have a video and I will, I'll either put it in the comment section, I mean the uh, description box, or I will put a card in the video so that you can go and make your own if you're interested. They don't cost a lot of money anyway if you buy the tool, um, the branded tool, but you can make your own if you want to and it doesn't cost a lot of money and it's super easy I'm not even a power tool kind of girl and I made my own with no help from my husband Okay, so we're gonna put a leave a piece of tail out about 12 inches long and then we're gonna start making loops and I think I did Six inch loops here. We're gonna do the same on both sides several times so I'm just going to take that again. I like to kind of fold it in the middle, put the wires together and then press it down, flip it over. If your ribbon is the same on both sides, you don't have to do that flip over in the middle, but mine is not. One side is shinier than the other and I want the shiny side out or up. So the pretty side up, right? That's what you're seeing me do. I'm trying to keep that pretty side up. I think I end up with about three loops on each side at about six inches per loop. I am not sure how much ribbon that was. 
Um, so you're going to have to actually do the math yourself on this one. I apologize, but I, I don't remember. Okay. Okay, it looks like I've actually got four loops on each side. So either way you want to do it, the more loops that you put, the fluffier your bow is going to be, or the bigger your bow is going to be. All right, so then I'm going to cut the other tail off. I'm going to take a little piece of that copper ribbon and tie it right around the middle. I'm going to tie it around the middle to hold the bow together, and we're going to tie this around the wreath. Now I'm going to tie it in the same spot where the other one was, and I just really feel that this is the better bow. What do you think? You can do it either way, and I'm happy to have shown you both ways. I show you my mess ups, and I show you my stuff that I end up with. Then I want to cover the little gap, so I'm just moving that greenery around. No problem there. Easy to do. All right. Now it's time for the harvest corn. I didn't really know what to call this. This is like a boho kind of thing. So I'm gonna use some jute twine, my scissors, a stick. I'm gonna use some of this multicolored corn, the little minis. I'm gonna use some corn husk, and I'm gonna use some of these picks from the Dollar Tree. Okay, so I've got this corn husk from another project that I did, and they're too big for this corn, but I wanna wrap the corn back up. So I decided, well, you know what? Let's just glue it back on there. Let's just glue this on here and then trim it down and make it look like this corn belongs in this husk. So then I'm gonna take my scissors and cut it. It's easy to cut like paper. That's all you have to do. Then I'm going to continue around to the bottom of it is covered. So if, if I could do that with one piece, then I would do it with one piece. If I have to piece it together, then I'll do that. Not a problem. Nothing's perfect in nature, right? I mean what humans consider perfect anyway. Perfectly imperfect, like we are. So I almost managed to get, yeah, I think I did get one corn husk around this one, so that's perfect. I just picked five of the ones that I like, the most interesting color, because for the size stick that I got, five is all gonna be able to fit on there. So we're gonna do all five of them like that. Then I'm gonna start cutting my jute. I'm gonna start off with 18 inches, then 16, then 14, then 12, then 10, because we want like a gradation, a degradation going downward so that our pieces of twine are different levels. I'm gonna take wood beads. That's the part that we're going to attach down to the corn. So I'm gonna make a double knot in the jute and then slide my bead down. so that it doesn't come off. So you can see, it does not come off. I'm gonna trim off that little piece. Here are my pieces of jute, here are my corns. You can use your scissors and kind of flatten the top of the corn or either like hollow it out so that that little bead sits down in it. Either way, this is how it will look after you do that step. Looks kind of rough, but don't worry, it's gonna look better. I'm taking some lighter colored jute here and I'm gonna go right around that same little section where they were joined together and wrap it with that lighter color. I'm gonna just turn the corn so I don't have the hanger in the way and just continue to go around covering up all of that stuff. We're gonna cover up the glue line and we're gonna cover up the gap that is between the corn and the husk. I think this gives it just a really cute boho feel and of course it looks better. Feel free to do this your own way. If you have other ideas of how this should be done, that is perfectly fine. By the way, I wanna take the opportunity while I am showing you this to let you know that I appreciate so much the kind comments, the suggestions, the niceness in the comments. Whenever I'm having a rough day or a hard day or just a super busy day and I'm feeling lonely because I work from home, Getting in my comment section and looking at the support from y'all, it just, it changes my day. And I want to thank you for that because it means so much to me. All right, so now that we've got all those done, we need to make a little knot in the end of the ropes to hang them off the stick. And we're going to do these in order from the shortest to the longest, continuing along just like this. You can see how I'm tying this little knot. Don't know the name of this knot. If you do, you can put it on there. 
but it's just a really simple knot. We use this a lot with hanging up, you know, on the back part of cord or hanging on the wall. So now I'm just getting an idea. And then I'm going to trim off after they're all on there. Trim off closer to the knot so we don't have any excess showing. And then I'm going to put these across the top. Now you can do them opposite directions like this, but for whatever reason, I felt like it looked better just layering them going in the same direction. So I flipped it around, moved it down just a tad, and did it this way. I just liked it better, but you can certainly do it any way you like. Now I want to get somewhat of even spacing between here before I glue down the little greenery pieces so that everything stays right in place and doesn't slide around and it's almost like we have sandwiched it sandwiched it between the stick and the little greenery that we're putting on the top it kind of locks it into place now this is something different I've never seen this before you might not like this and that's okay you don't have to watch it you don't even have to comment to tell me you don't like it it's not necessary if you don't like it you don't have to watch it um but I hope you're inspired by it. If, if nothing else, I hope you're inspired by it because I almost didn't show you this project, almost didn't share it, but once I got it complete, I really liked it. And I liked that it was something different and unpredictable. So I hope that, you know, in the spirit of me showing you this, that you will find some type of encouragement or some type of inspiration to make something maybe that you've never seen before that you wanted to try. Now we got our hanger. You can watch my videos on Mondays and Thursdays at five Central Standard Time. Now look how cute it is. I think it looks cute. And I've got three projects. These you could definitely use for Thanksgiving. I believe in you. And I know that you can do these projects. Maybe not exactly the same if you don't like what you're seeing, but you take some type of inspiration from it, then certainly do it. And please feel free to email me. Um, my information is in the description box. You can mail me, email me, whichever the ones you want to do. Pictures of what you've done if you've gotten any inspiration from my videos. I love the work that y'all are showing me. Oh my gosh, I have such a creative group of followers and i love it y'all really inspire me to keep going to you really do and it is so appreciated see i think it's cute they almost look like little angels if we would have given that corn wings we could have little angels right there couldn't we there's another option for you certainly i would love for you to subscribe and be part of this fun and supportive YouTube community. We really do have a good time and I promise I'm always going to bring you the best, most unique, interesting, inspiring crafts that I can and do it on a budget. I am never going to ask you to spend a fortune on anything. Even when you see me do a product review or um, you know I'm trying out something new, if you watch those videos but you don't want to purchase anything, you don't have to. It's still appreciated when you watch the videos and leave me comments. I really do love this community. I really do believe in you guys and, and gals. And I want you to believe in yourself. It's so important. I hope you find some joy in your day. Thanks for stopping by. And I'll see you again soon. Bye.